Hello everyone, this is Chetan Mehta from Skillcubator. So this session is about product backlog, specifically in Agile Scrum. So I got a lot of requests asking what exactly is a product backlog and what goes in a product backlog. So this is a short session explaining about the product backlog in Agile Scrum. So the agenda for this session is pretty straightforward. We will see some of the basic concepts around what exactly is a product backlog, what goes inside a product backlog. We'll take some examples um, and then we'll see um, how do we manage the product backlog, who is responsible for grooming the product backlog, in which environment it is used and some of the tools which are popular and people use it to manage their product backlog. So this is a Scrum framework. Um, I won't go into detail uh, because uh, I already have one session uploaded on Scrum framework. But as we all know that the product backlog is one of the key component of Scrum framework. And there's a ceremony called product backlog grooming, which happens on a continuous basis during the course of the project. And of course, the product owner owns the product backlog but we'll see who all can also contribute towards a product backlog. So I'm assuming that you know the Scrum framework and I will go from there. So basically a product backlog contains anything and everything that needs to be done towards the completion of the project. That means any work that needs to be accomplished, that needs to be completed as part of the project must go and sit in the product backlog. That includes your stakeholder requirements. And if you break it down into smaller components, your stakeholder requirements consist of epics, features, user stories. Now user stories can be functional requirements. They can be non-functional requirements, NFRs as well. Now, of course, in this session, I'm not going to go into the details of what is an epic feature stories. Um, we will have to uh, discuss it you know, in a different session but that is the main um, component of any product backlog. So majority of product backlog items will consist of your stories, whether it's a functional, non-functional stories. Now, in addition to that, it will also have defects, right? So the team is working on a product on an application and now they have a defect. So somebody will be raising a defect and that will also go and sit in the backlog. In addition to defect, there might be a lot of technical work needs to be done, enablers. Now this work may not be directly related to the user, but definitely it will help the user to use the system. So that's why it's also known as enablers or technical work. So this can consist of any architecture related work or design specific work, anything of that sort. And then the last thing is spike. Now spike is something like, um, you know, the team is unaware of that, how it's going to work or how to do this. Uh, it's like an exploratory work. You're trying to explore things. So it's more like an exploratory or research oriented work we need to do here. So here, for example, a user story uh, looks like something like this. As a manager, I want to create custom sales report so that I can analyze the sales data for better decision making, right? So this is an example of a story which is typically written from a user perspective. It is more um, like a functional requirement which is written in a very simple plain English words. Of course, it has to be uh, complemented with acceptance criteria which is not here right now, but I'm just trying to show you what goes in the product backlog. So that's one main component of a product backlog. So user stories will be added to the product backlog and something of this sort. Defects. As I said, when the team is building an application, definitely there will be defects. So any defects which are identified as part of the testing effort must be in the product backlog. Right. So here, for example, the sales report is displaying some junk characters in the report or 
it's unable to generate the sales report in a specific format right a customer also can report or an end user can report saying that you know he or she is unable to see or access historical orders right it can be design oriented like text on the home page is not aligned properly or the logo is not showing up in the right place anything of that sort which is not conforming to the requirements of the stakeholders will be a defect which will be raised by a tester and will be sitting in the product backlog. So here is another example, a technical work, like an enablers. So this may not be uh, directly concerned to the user of the system, but it can definitely impact the way they will be using the system. For example, um, updating the stored procedure as per the new requirements or refactoring the web services on the new based on the new ICD requirements or it can also be moving the database from one version to another version for compatibility reason right uh, creating some sort of shell scripts for automation suite um, getting the data the the data from the production environment into the test environment so that we can start testing right uh, build a working prototype of us of a component or a module within a system so you can see all of these examples it is not a functional requirement it is not something which the end user or the product owner might be aware of or might be knowing but the, these kind of uh, this kind of work needs to be done in order to support the project right so that's also a very important piece of your product backlog and that also must be stored in the product backlog spike as I said it's more like an exploratory work or research based work where we don't know and we want to invest some time uh, in order to learn about that piece of work so for example in order to support the data tra transmission requirements we need to do some sort of gap analysis the current state versus the future state uh, we want to analyze the current behavior of a feature or a function before we can make any changes to it or it can also be creating a proof of concept or doing a proof of concept on a specific tool or a specific um, language or a specific um, piece of component within the system before we can decide on that so anything of that sort we are trying to explore we are trying to do some research and learn about that piece that component before we can implement it that will be a spike now technically spike has to be done in a different way but again as I said uh, that's not the scope of this video uh, nevertheless the spike also will be within the backlog now the product backlog as you can see here the items on the top they are basically prioritized by the product owner and they are ready for um, implementation that means the scrum team can pick it and they can start using it in their sprint these are the items PBIs which are not yet ready but the team is working on it the product owner and the business analyst they are grooming the backlog and the items in the bottom part you can see that they are not yet groomed they are still waiting to be picked by the product owner and the business analyst to be groomed now who owns the backlog of course the product owner will own the backlog right but in reality the product owner might definitely need some help to groom the backlog so there are two answers here who owns the backlog it's always a product owner but in real world product owner will definitely get some support from other team members business analyst is one key role here who will be working with the product owner to groom the backlog right he or she can groom the backlog independently or they can also have some sort of additional stakeholders working with the BA to groom the backlog along with the PO 
right? But you know, as I said, the PO is the owner of the backlog. Anything that is in the backlog must be uh, coming through the product owner. He or she must know what's in the backlog. And if there is some sort of technical requirements, technical features, spike, or a bug which is sitting in the backlog, the product owner must be aware of that. And somebody from the team member must um, educate the PO or must walk him or her through this PBI and explain what that issue is. Uh, technical architects will be responsible for adding any enablers or technical features, technical stories. Some people call it technical task. Quality assurance people, tester, will be responsible for adding bugs and any other team members. It can be information assurance, it can be UI UX person or any other team member who has a PBI which is a valid PBI and which will contribute towards the completion of the project can add that PBI which is product backlog item into the backlog. But the prioritization will always be done by the PO. Now in which environment the product backlog grooming happens? No brainer, it's in Agile. So within Agile, you have Scrum, you have Kanban, you have Scrum Ban. So typically, the product backlog grooming happens in any of these three frameworks. Now, in addition to that, there are many other Agile frameworks. Even in those frameworks, we do use product backlog grooming. But typically, Scrum, Kanban, and Scrum Ban, these are the three SDLC frameworks in which the product backlog grooming happens. And last, some of the tools which are very popular and people use it on a day-to-day -day basis to manage their backlog and groom their backlog. The most popular one is Jira, Rally, Doors, which is Dynamic Object-Oriented Requirement System, and version 1. So these tools are the, one of the most popular tools uh, in today's environment, uh, which can be used to manage your backlog, to groom your backlog, prioritize your backlog, right and um, uh, add any of the new items into the backlog so that's about it for tonight and um, in the next short video I will do a demonstration on using the Jira tool how to create your backlog how to groom it how to add new items how to assign stories to a team member we will see in that session so that's all for today uh, thanks for watching and if you need to get trained for all your training needs, please do contact us on 703-200-9921. You can reach me on info at skillcubator.com. The website is www.skillcubator.com. Thank you. Bye.